Funding for Firehouse Kitchen is provided by RW Prime. Good times, great steaks. Located at Resorts World, New York City. Best Market, your neighborhood's first choice. Riverhead Bay Motors, specializing in Subaru and Volkswagen. Murph's Famous Bloody Mary Mix. One sip, one believer, party with the Murph. Shallon Self-Defense Center. Classes for men, women, and children. Kick with the best. Fire News. Serving heroes since 1973. Gentle Dental. Located in Eastport, New York. Rene Dumang. Fine jewelry located in East Islip, New York. DiCarlo Food Service. Servicing the food industry since 1963. Located in Farmingville, New York. Firefightersfashions.com. The swag of firefighters' apparel. Hi, I'm Firefighter Ray, and we are in Merrick, Long Island. I've come here today to settle a little dispute between the engine and the truck. We're gonna settle it in the kitchen. We have Mike O'Sullivan for the truck, we've got Danny Munson, so let's get ready to cook in Merrick on this episode of Firehouse Kitchen. We are here in Merrick. We are settling a rivalry between the engine and the truck. Now, I'm gonna judge this at the end. Mike O'Sullivan for the truck, Danny Munson, I'm a trucky, so we'll see what happens, engine. We'll see what happens. Now, you were saying before, is this fair? This is a culinary student. Dan, where do you go to school? State University of New York in Delhi. In Delhi, very nice. And Mike is retired at NYPD. NYPD detective, yep. How long have you been on? Um, With the fire department, 12 years. 12 years on the American fire department. Now, Mike was like, hey, you know what? We got this cook. But I said, Mike, this is the truck. We like challenges. He goes to culinary school. He's young. You have life behind you. New York City, NYPD. The fat guy knows how to cook. <laughs> the fat guy, yeah, that's it. We like to cook. That's we it. like to cook. All right, so we'll start with Mike. What are you making? I'm going to make a chicken salt and boca that's going to be on a bed of sauteed spinach uh, with a pasta on the side. And it's called chicken sauté boca. Salt and boca. Yes. Salt and boca. Very nice, very nice. Where'd you learn how to make this meal? Uh, actually, had it at a restaurant in the city. And okay. he just recreated it. So I'm having that at home. I'm having this every night. Uh, not every night, but it's a good one. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. It's a lot of work, but it's good. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right, what are you making? Making chicken burgundy with a uh, herb risotto and uh, asparagus and carrots in a white wine reduction sauce. Wow. Wow. That is, sounds delicious. Very good culinary school. All right. And he's in the engine. It's okay. It's okay. I like the engine. Now, for those of you at home who don't know, we have an engine and truck in just about every firehouse. The engine carries the hose, they put out the fire, truck, we go in, we rescue, we get the metals, we, we, we the search and rescue, all right? But one can't survive without the other. I love having the knob in, the, in, the, in, a, uh, in a job. It's the best, best position of the job. Don't feel like it. We got one more in the kitchen. I forgot to introduce him, Jack Angle. He's gonna be our probie today. He's gonna run back and forth. He's gonna do all our chopping. Anything that these two guys need, that he's gonna help with. Now. Jack is in the truck, so a little sabotage to the culinary kid. He can use all the help you need. That's it. I'm not picking on him. He's, he's got thick skin. We were joking around before the show. So no emails. Ray, you were bullying Danny. That young, nice boy. Pension companies don't need any help. I love it. I love it. All right, let's start with you. What are you going to do first? All right, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to break down this chicken. So. Okay. Now, while he's breaking, he's going to break down the chicken. Uh, what are we gonna do over here first? All right, over here first, I gotta get my sauce started. My sauce is gonna be uh, my herbs, okay. carrots, celery, with a chicken, uh, with a beef stock. Oh, the beef stock, all right. He's gonna all start right. He's gonna start getting ready with his sauce over there. And we got the chicken over here. I'm gonna cut this bad boy up. Yep. What I'm gonna do is find right in the middle. 
closing knife, it'll fall to either side of that bone right there. Very nice. Pull it right across, take the tip of your knife, go around, and you'll re reach the collarbone. And just make sure you don't get in there. And then you're gonna peel it back as you're going. As you're going, we'll peel it back. Peel it back, you're gonna find that skin. Your knife should just glide right through. Now what are okay. you, are you cutting your own chicken cutlet out there? Of course, you know. Look at this. Best way, it'll save you money in the long run if you can butcher your chicken yourself. See, in the truck, we just buy our chicken cutlets. We just buy our chicken cutlets in the truck. There they are, right there here. There you go. Look Bay at how we ready. prepare them. <laughs> just open the bag, take it out, we love it. Because we do that because we need time, because we might have to rescue someone, right? That's right. Hey, that's we got to be ready at all times. <laughs> you hey, you're doing a nice job here, man. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, simple stuff. Mm -hmm. It's fast, easy to do. Once you do yeah. it, as long as you have everything put in place right, mm -hmm. you know, mise en place, everything put in its place. Everything, if you're organized, you know where everything is. You know, in the kitchen, just like firefighting, you know where everything is on the rig. Everything goes so much smoother, so much faster. Yes. You just want to be really careful when you're doing it. Make sure you get all those bones out. Okay. So it's nice, simple, beautiful breast right there. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful chicken breast. All right, so we got our chicken right there. All right, so with this dish, got your chicken cutlet. Taking sage. A little bit of sage. A lot of bit of sage. We're gonna put a little bit of sage all over it. We're gonna sage the heck out of it. Oh, you smell that smell. It's strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fresh is great. Fresh, fresh sage is. Yeah, I always we always get it in the shaker. I like the fresh sage. All right, and now with this. Gonna pound the bichute onto the uh, chicken cutlet. Onto the chicken cutlet, a little flavor. So th now what do we got right here? Right now I just diced up some onion. Okay. I'm gonna bring it right on over and I'm gonna start my risotto. Little risotto. They always mess this up on Hell's Kitchen and all those shows. Let's see how our little culinary school guy does with his risotto. That's probably the most difficult part of this meal, right? In culinary school? A little bit, yeah. You because know. if you overcook it, it gets really clumpy. It gets like soft, right? You want it like just right. Just like everything, it takes a little care. You put a little care into it, it'll come out perfect every time. Oh. Dan's got all the sayings. I gotta pound these out. All right, uh, pound them out. Basically, you're adhering the uh, pajut onto the cutlet. With the sage between it. Very nice. All right, I'm gonna have to put in my flour now. All right, so we're gonna flour these bad boys up. Gonna flour these up. I got marjoram, cumin. Love it. And basic salt and pepper. Basic salt and pepper. Very nice. Gonna whisk this together. What was it called again? Chicken what? Salt and boca. Chicken salt and boca. I'm gonna make this tonight when I get home. I'm gonna dazzle Miss Kuhn. What are you making tonight, Ray? Some chicken salt and boca. All right, Flannel, so what's going on back here? Just add some chicken stock to this risotto. Just sauteed up those onions, got them nice, uh, soft. Okay. Threw in uh, that rice, coated in that fat, so it's getting all that flavor. Uh, just threw in that chicken stock, and now it just needs to start cooking. And all that chicken stock's adding all that nice, beautiful chicken flavor right to it. You're doing a great job, man. Thanks, You're doing thanks. a great job. Great job. Awesome. Young kid, man. He's getting those is cooking. 21 years old. Remember when I was 21? I wasn't cooking. I was doing other things, but we can't talk about that on this. Uh, All right. Just a little bit of milk. Okay, so a little bit of milk, a little, a little bit, bit of eggs. A little bit of milk, a little bit of eggs. Nice. Very, very nice. Now you put the flour on there, that grabs the egg, right? That makes it grabs it. Like it grabs like it. It's kind of the opposite of a breaded cutlet. Mm -hmm. This will coat it, give it a little more fluffy coat. Very nice. All right. All right. Let me just see if my oil's ready. Oil's ready, right there you go. And that's going right on the pan like that? Right in the pan like that, yep. Awesome. Let me just squeeze by here. Shake it in, just a little what, salt and pepper on that? Just a little salt and pepper right on that. A little skin. salt and pepper, basic. I don't know, it's gonna be very hard to choose. <laughs> I'm really liking him, but he is in the engine. Now how long does this usually take to cook? It should only be about three minutes each side. Next, we're gonna start with some baked clams. Oh, let's wait on the baked clams, okay? All right. We got the chicken cooking, everything's going on, we gotta clean up. Let's go to a safety tip right now. 
And when we come back, we will continue with this rivalry between the engine and the truck. Awesome. Hi, I'm Firefighter Ray, and today's safety tip is the life vac. I was at the EMS Fire Department Super Show at Nassau Coliseum, and I came across this very, very cool invention. This is Arthur Lee. How you doing, Arthur? What's up, Ray? Thanks. And beautiful. Why don't you tell us about the life vac? Well, the, the situation happened where uh, I heard a story of a child the same age as my daughter who choked to death, and um, you know, it's a really scary thought. It's a leading cause of accidental death under 14, and um, it just motivated me to try and make a difference. And I went in my garage, and uh, I just worked on this for about nine months, and I came up with LifeVac. It's a simple suction device. You push it, and you pull it. There's a special valve, so you can't force it down. And uh, so the one-way expulsion of the air comes out, you make the pull, it sucks right out. and it pops it out. Can you demonstrate? You betcha, I'd love to. This is my friend Choking Charlie. Um, he's used to uh, practice the Heimlich maneuver. Someone gave him to me because he didn't work, and uh, we saved him with the life back. All right. So it's just get a good seal on Charlie's face or the victim's face, push, give it a pull, and you just save the there person's it is. life. Voila! Oh my Voila. goodness, that is Voila. incredible. Can I try? Moment. I'd love right, you I'm to. I'm gonna try this bad boy out. All right, he's choking, he's choking, he's choking. <laughs> Firefighter Ray arrives on the scene. He's got his life back in hand. I make sure my seal is tight. Right against the face. Unbelievable. All right. Saved his life. This is awesome. I know. Holy cow. Every school, every fire truck, every restaurant. 4,000 lives a year we're gonna save. 4,000 lives a year. I'm Firefighter Ray. I have Arthur Lee, great, thank you for coming here. Thank you. And today's safety tip is the life hack. And remember, these tips save lives. Yes! The authentic recipes for all of our products are signature to La Morena. The chilies are literally hand-picked for each can. Everything is manufactured in Mexico and imported into the U.S. La Morena is best known for its quality and authentic flavor, giving our users a taste of home. Stock up on flavor with La Morena. That was some cool suction device, huh? Pretty neat device, yeah. Did you like how I had the Merrick Fire Department right behind me? Got to represent. Got to represent. Very cool. All right. All right. So, what is next? I'm going to start my bake clams. Bake clams? Oh, put them on a shell. I like this. I'm going to prep the clams with a little olive oil just so it doesn't stick in there. Very nice. Now, this is a scallop shell. Now, I guess it's because you guys are really classy. These look really much prettier than a regular clam yeah, shell. Yeah, just a little nicer presentation. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. You see how the, the truck takes care into every little thing that it does, Danny? All right. Well, not, not everything. Danny, what are you working on, buddy? Uh, I'm just cleaning up some uh, pearl onions. All right, very nice. Mushrooms right for my sauce. I'm looking at these mushrooms. You made them bold. Yep, uh, you know, it makes it nice, clean. You don't get that little annoying stuff in your teeth. Okay. Um, and it just makes for a better sauce. It makes for a better sauce. Okay. That's cool. I, was, I actually never saw this yet. It's peeling the, uh, peeling the mushroom. Do it with. You could even do it with the back of the knife. It's so easy to get off. All right. All right. So let's do some uh, clams. I baked clams. All right, Jack's going to do the assembly. We're going to put some. I put crab meat in my clams. It doesn't Hello? make them baked clams, but it really. Takes off on uh, the flavor. All right. I got crab meat. I was gonna say you have some clams to go into you. Yeah, we put some clams in. They're baked clams, but they're really, it's, really clams, a, it's, you know. a, it's a seafood okay. stuffed shell. We got uh, minced cl uh, minced clams. Okay. And I also put shrimp in there. A little bit. Wow. Yeah. This bit is shrimp. all. So it's really like this. It's all shelly. It's a seafood. We'll call it stuffed it's shells. A, it's, it's a stuffed, stuffed shell. shells with shells and right. shells. We'll finish it up with a little Parmesan cheese. Very nice. Gonna mix this up. Now, okay. just in the, in the pan, I, in the bottom of the bowl, I did have some uh, melted butter, garlic, and parsley. Mm -hmm. All right, just so you know how it starts. That brings everything together. It brings together. And just Some a little crumbs. bit of breadcrumb just to pull it together. Very simple, OK? It's basically, you, this is just chopped up fish, and bread, some butter, in, and some oil, some breadcrumbs. Butter, oil, breadcrumbs. A little salt, pepper, a little love, if you like. I like that. I like red pepper. Give it a little spice, a little kick. All right, now what spice is this we got going? I got a little bit of parsley, a little bit of sage, a little bit of fresh thyme. Fresh thyme, love it. You know, we got all the time in the world. We've got all the time in the world. 
That's what Chuck always says, right? Go ahead. Sorry, I messed up his joke. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All the time in the world while we're waiting on Chuck to show up. I'm waiting on the truck to show up. All right. That looks good. This is looking delicious back here. Everything smells delicious here in the Merrick Fire Department. We're down here at the truck company. I see the uh, the truck has people here watching. Where are all the engine guys? Well, they got to be ready you know, in case we actually get a call so we can get out. Oh, <laughs> that's it. Are well, you guys having trouble getting out? <laughs> Usually. Yeah. Yeah. So you got any uh, funny stories for the uh, truck? Anything that they've done that... Uh... It was a good one. Uh, showed up to a call one day, beat them out like usual. Okay. Um, so we're so we're waiting on you know it was a BS you know auto alarm. We knew it was nothing. Okay. And they're pulling up behind us, and we're you know we're at the back step waiting to see if we have to do anything. And then we just start staring at the wrong house. And the guys didn't know where the house they were going to. They walk up right to the wrong house. Hey, that that, that happens sometimes. Well, that's so, funny. That's no, happening. Yeah, but, don't you go away to school? Yeah, I do. Well, is that one of like the six runs you made this year? Oh, <laughs> oh man. All right, I gotta put these in the oven for uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes in the oven. We're gonna grab those bad boys right. Everything is coming together. These go in the oven for 20 minutes. 20 minutes in the oven. Everything is coming together. All right. And he put it in the right oven. He didn't go to the wrong oven. He has his, I have mine. No, right. same because you guys went to the wrong house that time. Was same. Come on. Right. I don't remember that story, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that story sounds like it's fiction. Uh, Engine telling right. lies again. Engine nice telling lies. All right, so what exactly are we doing to these carrots? I'm giving it a, uh, a rough cut, kind of a julienne, just a little rougher than usual, but you know, it's the firehouse. You don't have to be perfect every Tell time. Tell me, what's this. that julienne? What does that mean? Julienne, it's a, it's a dimension that you cut it. It's a one eighth by one eighth by two and a half inches. It's like a little stick. That's culinary talk. In the firehouse, we just say, cut them thin. All right. All right, so while you're julienning your carrots, what do we got going over here? All right. I got shallots and butter. They got to sweat down a little bit. Shallots and butter is going to sweat down. All right. This is it. ultimately for our sauce that we're making. Yes. That's what's in here right now. That's the finished product. All right, product. this is what it looks like. So we're going to do a quick, right. quick, how do you make this sauce? This sauce is uh, beef stock. Mm -hmm. um, it simmers in, uh, with uh, rosemary, sage, and thyme, carrots, mm -hmm. celery, and an onion for about two hours. All the flavors get caught into the broth. Then you make a roux with butter and flour, and you thicken it up. Making that roux. I love it. All right, so as we're getting ready for this, what goes in next? Next, gonna put some wine in there, white wine, Chardonnay. A little white wine, Chardonnay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Let that reduce down. That was my French. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Tough roux. All right, now we're putting everything together. We got lots going on. We got cheese getting cut. We got chicken cooking in the sauce. We've got this crazy vegetable thing going on. And your risotto, is that looking good over there, Angie? Yeah. Great. And he says great. All right, let's go to a fire fact and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Firefighter Ray. And today's fire fact is the regulator. <laughs> I'm standing here with Firefighter Rayola from the Connecticut State Fire Academy, and we've got my mask in the hand, and this is the regulator here on the front of the mask. It actually can come off. In case firefighters have to talk to each other or communicate on the radio, it comes right off real easy. But ultimately what this does is this distributes the air to the firefighter, and it regulates it, so not too much air is coming out. Now, what happens when we start to run out of air, the Viber Alert goes off. And we hear this, this means we gotta get out. We only have a few more minutes in there. I'm Firefighter Ray, and today's fire fact is the regulator. For generations, our family has perfected authentic Mexican dishes from seasoned chicken and beef to carnitas, arroz, and barbacoa. The Cardenas family has always followed the traditions of their ancestors when it comes to cooking. From the beginning, They've created authentic Mexican dishes from scratch using recipes that have been passed down and perfected over generations. This tradition of gathering around a great meal with family and friends is what their here, foods, strives to pass on. From our family to yours. I gotta get my spinach started. All right, so we're gonna make spinach now. We got the mozzarella on the chicken. 
fresh mozzarella. Fresh mozzarella. We cut up some bacon. Tell us what we're gonna do with this bacon. Gonna throw it right in that pan, get it nice, crispy. Throw it, uh, throw some paper towels with it, dry it up so you get these nice, beautiful bacon bits. I absolutely love it. All right. All right, very cool. So, so take spinach back here. Love spinach. All right. How we doing, Jack? Doing good. What does he got you doing? I see you got some leftover uh, mozzarella here. Yeah. Wow. I, should probably, I should probably take a taste of that, right? All right, go. Everything's cooking. So we got the spinach. I see we got some pasta. We're gonna mix everything together. The bacon is looking amazing. Chicken is cooking. Truck versus engine. The big cook-off goes on. All right, so where are we gonna taste this? We'll go in the rec room. We're gonna go in the rec room. Very cool. We have to judge, I have to judge, this rivalry between the engine and the truck. Who will win? Who will have bragging rights? And we'll be right back. We are at the judges' table right now. These guys are sweating bullets. I'm sitting here with Paul Scaleri, the chief of the American Fire Department. Very, very cool. Now, firefighting is a dangerous job, and we're gonna dedicate this episode to some fallen members that were in Merrick. Chief, who are those fallen members? Uh, they are John Mammon, Kenneth Smith, Ronnie Geese, and Brian Sweeney. May God rest their soul, all killed in the line of duty. Yes. <clears throat> Let's go to a lighter note. Let's go to the, the why we're here. Let's go to the contest, yes. all right? We've got unbelievable chicken with pasta here. We've got the Superman from the engine over here with our chicken. Which one should we try first? Let's try the chicken first. Let's try this chicken. Well, it's both chicken, but this one is, uh, this is the clucker here. This one's yours, this one's mine. All right. All right. Let's see. This is from the end, so I got my knife in hand. I was gonna pick it up and eat it with my hands. I know, like a truckie, right? right. Like a savage truckie. Let's see. Mmm, very good. Mmm. Mmm. Very juicy. Nice. Danny, nice job. Let's take a little risotto. Perfect. Mm. Unbelievable. Little veggies. Nice, nice. And it's very pretty. It's very pretty. Mm. Yes, just like I Danny. See. Just like Danny. <laughs> to Danny, just for the chief, exactly what are we eating here? Are you eating a chicken burgundy, uh, which is uh, it's made with a red wine reduction sauce uh, and a bed of an herb risotto and uh, carrots and uh, nice. s uh, asparagus tips in a white wine reduction. In a white wine reduction. Excellent. He went to culinary school. Yeah. <laughs> I went to, we, us truckies, we went to the school of hot knocks. All right. You got that right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's clean our palates. <laughs> Salute. Salute to our fallen members. This, yes. This. Okay. Unbelievable. Here we go. Let's give it a try. Yeah, this looks like Italian. Yeah. This looks a little Italian. Okay. It looks like something from mm. an O'Sullivan. Right? Mmm. <laughs> Pasta tastes delicious. Very good. Very good. Very good. I like the prosciutto. Very nice. Perfect. Mm. Mike, tell the chief, what are we eating here? Chicken salt and boca. It's uh, chicken cutlet, pajut, fresh mozzarella, and an herb, uh, brown herb sauce. Delicious. Delicious. I like the, uh, nice. we, got, we got a little treat here on the side. <laughs> I see that. That tastes as, uh, oh. his, his baked clam. Wow. All right, I want it. Oh. I've been waiting for the this. The engine doesn't have a baked clam. But the truck does. Very close. But a little lemon. <laughs> here we go. You know, it's not, chief, I, I keep saying mm. engine, given. I'm in the engine in my oh. volunteer firehouse, but I was a truckie in the New York City Fire Department. Oh, glad so. to hear that. <laughs> Delicious. Delicious. Right? Tell us about our baked clam. What's in here? Uh, baked clams, clam, crab meat, shrimp, breadcrumb, garlic, and parsley. It's stuff that has shells stuffed into a shell. I love it. I love it. All right. So, Chief, I know what I'm going to I know what I am. Mm. I know what I'm going to say. You ready? Yep. All right, what do you like, Chief? <clears throat> I really like that cutlet. That cutlet hits <sighs> home. I liked, Danny, I love Joe's. I thought it was delicious, but uh, Mike's kind of got my heart. I love the prosciutto and the mozzarella. Um, the pasta is really good. 
They're both, if we were cooking two similar dishes, like if we were doing like maybe a chicken or a baked chicken against this, this is unbelievable. But just for my taste, I'm gonna go have to go with the truck. I'm gonna have to go with the truck. You with me, Chief? I'm with you. Danny. That cutlet tastes awesome. Better luck next time. <laughs> Danny, it was awesome. Okay, it was delicious, it's unbelievable. The risotto was perfect. Nice. But um, unfortunately, there can only be the only one. And you got it, you got a truck. Unbelievable. All right. Salute, very nice. Yes, so good job by both companies. I'm gonna finish awesome. both meals here. That's why, you know, I always gain weight on Firehouse Kitchen. <laughs> to find out more about Firehouse Kitchen, go to firehousekitchenshow.com. You can find out our recipes, how to get on the show, how to have your firehouse on the show, um, different charities, friends of firefighters, Isotown Fire Museum, everything. Just go to firehousekitchenshow.com, friend us on Facebook, the works. I had a great time today. So did I. I had a really good time. This was a great cook-off. The food was wonderful for a young guy, man, 21 years old. This guy's yeah, cooking okay. like a chef. He's gonna have his own cooking show sometime. Hey, Jack, great job cutting up that comparison. He did a great job, this kid. <laughs> hey, Mike, awesome brother. Thank Very you. nice, good. You know what? We got a bunch of America guys. You guys, come on and follow them behind us. All right, cool. All right, look at all these farmers. Look at all these hungry farmers. They're waiting to eat. <laughs> and we will see you next time on... Firehouse Kitchen. Kitchen! All right, very nice. Sorry, engine. Truck prevail. <laughs>